Greetings viewers, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be building a do-it-yourself load bank for portable generators. So on my channel, I do a lot of work with generators and this is my do-it-yourself way of putting together a safe method of connecting these generators up to a bunch of resistors uh, to basically load them up to their full rated capacity. In this case, I have a 5,000 watt heater and a 7,500 watt heater, which I'm going to connect in parallel through this sub panel. The input that will go to the generator is this SOOW four gauge, three conductor with a ground. And this is very, very thick wire. And that should handle up to safely 60 amps. Uh, it can go up to 70 amps based on the National Electric Code here in the United States. It is SOOW cord. It's not like it's THHN, I believe it is. It's the type of insulation, basically, that limits the amount of current. And in this case, 4 gauge should be more than enough for what I'm looking to do. The biggest generator, portable generator anyway, that I've come across is the GP17500. And then it's also known as the Ultrasource 17,500 there. It's made by Generac. That's probably one of the biggest ones on wheels that I see. There are a few uh, other brands like Winco and whatnot, but at that level, they really don't belong in the portable category. Those are pretty hard to move. So I have a few other miscellaneous parts. I have some three quarter inch clamps here, some double pull. I got a double pull 30, a double pull 40 for the 7,500 watt heater and then another double pull 30 for a third line that I'm going to be running, and I will still have another two open spaces if I wanted to add more. Now, essentially, this panel is going to be wired up as a sub-panel when I connect to the generators, and I do need a separate ground bar if I ever wanted to bond the neutral to the ground bar inside to make it a true main panel, and essentially the generator would have to have a floating new neutral and that bond would be made in here, and then I would have to connect that generator to a ground rod. I did get a ground bar, but it is not the right part number. It's a TGK4CP. I should have looked on the box. It actually requires a 14-hole TGL2, and unfortunately, they were out of stock over at Homer, and it looks like I'm going to have to go to the other Homer in a couple towns over to pick one up because this small one will not fit inside. If we take this off to take a look inside, here's your neutral bar. Here's your main bar. So your main lugs will come in here, your X and your Y hot, your neutral lug is going to go here. And normally right here between these two holes is where you would mount your ground bar there. Unfortunately, this one's a little too small. So in the magic of editing, I will pick up the correct one. I've shown this in previous videos, but this is my 7,500 watt electric heater. It's normally like a space heater, garage heater would be mounted up on the ceiling and it can do, it's actually got a microprocessor inside. It runs off 240 volts exclusively. It does not use the neutral. It just uses a two wire, uh, two, the two X and Y hots and the ground. It can do 6250 watts on low and then a 7500 watts on high. And it even comes with a convenient remote. I picked up some more 10 gauge wire here because I'm going to change the way that I connect my 5,000 watt heater, which is more, a little bit more simple. It's just got a dial underneath here for a thermostat and it can either, and it has a three way switch where it can basically do 3,000, 4,000 or 5,000. And I do apologize. It's a little dark, but that's basically how that switch works. Finally, the third double pull 30 that I'm going to have in there. So I'll have this one on 30 amps, the 5,000 on 30 amps, and then the 7,500 watt on the 40 amp double breaker. This was my original, and it's still I use it as an extension cord one before the L1430, and then it can also go to a female L1430. It's a breakout box here. And then what I did was one, two, three, four, four outlets. They are all breakered at 15 amps each figuring that that would be a good way to test space heaters. And that's still a great way to load up generators as well, small 120 volts uh, space heaters. And I can do it with this cord very easily. But now that I'll have that breakout cord, this is a great tool to have, but I've essentially graduated to having the big 240 volt heaters. This will give me more than enough load capability plus the extra open space if I ever wanted to expand upon the setup. 
All right, I started assembly here. Did some of the knockouts here so I can get the circuit breakers to fit. You got the 40 amp here for the 7500 heater, 5000 watt here, a 30 amp pull, double pull here, and then another double uh, 30 amp pull here for the breakout plug that I'm going to be using. I just had some leftover 10 gauge cable. I'm going to use that for the 5000 watt here since that already has those ends on there already. The 7500 watt heater is going to be hardwired in since this is likely going to be, I'm not going to be able to run that off of any circuit in my house unless I put in a double pull 40 amp and I don't really need that. And I really wanted to make sure that I had that modular end available for the 5000 watts since I used it down in the basement and to heat up the basement here during the winter. The same thing goes for the double pull 30 here. That's just another extension cord basically that I can go and break out. And then over here is where I'm going to have to get a half inch clamp here and then it's going to the main lugs are going to go here so your x and your y and then to the neutral here and then eventually i'll get that ground bar here and again this is very 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 thick cord i think this has to be about an inch thick here's the panel cover on temporarily again i'm going to have the 5000 watt heater here or i can have the 5000 watt here connected right here i will i do have another female L1430 here that I'm going to be putting for this branch circuit here and then the 7500 watt heater is going to be hardwired in here. They don't have any large enough knockouts down here for the 8 gauge wire to fit unfortunately but that's okay. It will be set up nice and neat once it's all done. Here's the completed, well almost completed, I still need to put the end on here which I'll talk about in a moment but the inside of this is all complete. I have my two L1430 twist sock female connectors right here. One is set up for the double pull 30 here. The second one is another double pull 30 here. And then over here is my 7500 watt heater, which is on a double pull 40 amp with eight gauge wire. Now, what you are also noticing is I have an eight gauge wire, green wire, bonding the neutral and the ground bars together. Now, this needs to be looked at for every individual generator that I would wind up testing because I would need to connect the neutral and the ground in this panel if my, the generator that I'm testing, it has what's called a floating neutral, meaning it does not have this bond inside the generator itself. If it does have the neutral bonded to ground in the generator, then I need to remove this ground wire here from the neutral and the ground bars because you do not want two bonds in the same system. There's just, it causes problems, it causes circulating currents, GFIs won't work, and just not a good situation in general. I'm not gonna get too much more in detail into that. Now, I have some very thick four gauge wire here and i've already stripped out the wires here enough to where now what end am i going to use on this cord because every single generator that i've come across seems to not have the same ends all the time now that the load bank panel is complete uh, what to put on this end the power input that would connect to the generator so that i can run all my different resistive loads to low test the generator and right now the largest generator i have is 8000 watts it's that winco generator and it has this unique cs6365 plug or the 6369 is the receptacle side of it and this is designed to handle up to 50 amps i also more commonly find the 14-50p which is typically what you would find on your electric oven for example in your house uh, this is designed up for 50 amps and then they do make another version of this that is 60 amps where I think the blade is different You can actually uh, see a picture of it here on the screen and This four gauge wire is designed to handle 60 amps, but if it's just powering uh, Tools like a, an electric heater for example or a welder I think you're allowed by code to go up to 70 amps with this thick a wire and that is good because on the largest generator that I've come across, which is the Generac GP17500, and or it could be under the Ultra Source, it actually does not have a receptacle rated up to 70 amps. 
uh, 17.5 watts is a roughly about 73 amps. And this is the largest plug that you find on it. I'm not sure why. I would think that they only want to go push 50 amps onto this plug. And then any other remaining power capacity for that generator is going to go to the other plugs for other equipment. But suffice to say, if I wanted to put, I have one 5,000 watt heater, I can get another 5,000 watt heater here, another 7,500 watts. I have plenty of resistive load bank to now test any size generator that I need or come across. So I decided to go with the 6365, uh, CS6365 plug here, since I have a generator that has that right now. It's the less common, and then more commonly I'll find the 14-50P, and I can always put this on here when I have a generator to test with that. But now I would say that this load bank is ready to go, and this is properly set up for a 7500 watt heater. Got the 40, double pole 40. My two extra branch circuits here, so one here and two here. And I got more than enough capacity to make this happen. And it's currently set up for the neutral bonnet to ground, so any neutral floating generator, this can now be connected to. If I had a neutral bonded to the frame, then I would have to go inside and remove that jumper, but it's easy enough to do. I'm on the ground here, but just as an overview of how I would use this, in a situation where I had a generator that I needed to test. I have my 7,500 watt heater here. I got my 5,000 watt. I would connect the 5,000 watt to either one of these outputs here. And I have the double pole 40 for the 7,500 watt heater right here. And double pole 30 for this outlet. And then double pole 30 for this outlet as well. And I have the CS6365 plug on here. If I, since I have that generator that has it, I can always use this end and swap it out if I needed to. And then I just happen to have an adapter where it goes from an L1430 to a L1420, just in case the generator only had that instead of the L1430. It's a nice little adapter so I don't have to go and be changing ends all the time. If I find a second 5000 watt heater, great, that's inexpensive, or if I get a good deal on it, or I can go and use my breakout extension cord here with my four outlets and my L1430 male and then there's another L14 female could use it as an extension cord if I wanted to. I hope this video has been helpful for everyone. If anyone knows where I can test a greater than 12,000 watt generator with with this, please let me know. Like I said, I've only come across that 175 generator once in the last couple of years so it's not often you find something like that and it's also quite hard to move but any questions on the build of this please let me know thanks for watching